This is Recruitment Agency Ignition with With Andy Andy Whitehead. Helping you build your recruitment employment business fast. Fast, fast. Using digital and automation and one to many systems, tools, and inbound strategies. So today we are focusing on the client conversion call. So the client conversion call, what are we talking about here? Well, very, very simply, we're talking about the part of the process whereby we've done our marketing, we've done our authority, we've run our campaign, we've got the inbound, we've got the point where the decision maker, the client says, let's speak on Monday at two o'clock, or indeed we're sat across a desk in some lowly part of the world, feeling stressed, thinking, will I get the contract? Will I get the business? So the actual conversion call or conversion meeting, whichever way you you run your process. So we're actually talking about the face-to-face interaction or indeed the, the telephone interaction or derivatives thereof. So really, when we talk about the, the client attainment system or we talk about the, the pills to close business, the whole thing fits together. So we know, for example, the client attainment system fits together with double R, double R. It fits together with the, um, the lead gen engine. It fits together with content canon. We know that the client attainment system fits with the magic pills to close business. The whole thing fits together bit by bit. It all fits together. We're at the point now whereby the lead has come in and we're sat in front of the potential client or on the phone with the potential client. It might be the first point of contact. It might be the second. So what I'm going to do is give you a framework. Now, the framework is not to restrict you. The framework is actually to give you freedom. I'll say that again. The framework framework is not to restrict you. It's not, we must say this in this order. Far from it. It's to give you the tools and the ability to ensure that, A, you can lead that conversation, B, close that conversation, but C, be ready for any direction that conversation goes. So if you've got a funnel whereby, for example, you're taking your prospect, your client through an audit, you lead the entire process. You have a a discrete template that you follow. When you're sat in front of a client and you're speaking to the client and you're there crapping your pants, or indeed you might sit there confidently and go, I don't really need this business. Why are you there then? The conversation could go off in many different angles. So when we first started using the client attainment system, in those days, it's called something different um, as a tool also to close business. One of the guys we tested on was a gruff Scottish guy who swore more than me. But he managed to get a million pound tender after 85 days of joining the inner circle. When he first came to us, he's doing 2,000 pounds a month, a month. We actually rejected him. The point I'm making to you is no matter how small or big you are, there is a framework that can be replicated and can work. And it's called the client conversion call. And it's something that's developed over the years. But again, I must say this up front. This isn't a framework that you follow step by step. Sorry, Mr. Client, um, you've asked me about this, but I need to go back to page four now and talk about this. Of course it's not. You're having a conversation. A conversation is two-way. So in NLP terms, how do you denote you've had a great conversation? By the response you get. So you cannot lead and own how your prospect's going to think through the entire 20, 30 minutes of that conversation. But what you can do is lead them to a point of conversion, subtly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, there might be occasions, as I say, where um, you're seen as the authority and basically they're begging you. And that's, that's something completely different. But I'm going to take the, the general, which is whereby you've got the lead, you're speaking to a client, and they're going to be cynical about you. You're going to be crapping your pants. You want the business. And there's going to be this icky feeling inside thinking, shit. In the old days, I used to sell to them, push hard, and then take a deep breath and go, <gasps> move on to the next one. We're not about that. We're about being the trusted advisor. So the key, the key word here is conversion. It's conversion. But not conversion in terms of a sales process. Conversion in how they think about you. Conversion in how they think about you from being a salesperson to indeed the solution provider. That's what we're talking about. So first off, the reason why you fail, the reason why we fail to close. So whether you're someone who has been in recruitment 20 years and you are the Mac Daddy, the Don of this stuff, 
or whether you're a startup business person or whether you've been recruiting for 20 years and you're jaded. Or you might be the person who's in their 20s and you're going, fuck me, man, this is the year I'm going to kill it. We'll crush everyone. The same proliferates across every dynamic in terms of the outcome we're looking to achieve. The outcome being, we're not looking for a hard sell and then the person goes missing. We're looking for you to be the trusted advisor, their partner. So there's a few things you need to take on board. So first off, the biggest challenge that I've seen, and you might be able to relate to yourself, is when we get into a conversion conversation, we go into sales mode. We go into sales mode. And what that means is, subconsciously, we go into fast mode. We go into fast mode. We're in sales mode. We're there to get the sale. So why are you? Blah, blah, blah. And we're there and we're, 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 we're reacting. So we're in sales mode. We're in fast mode. So we're there to basically serve ourselves. Serve ourselves. Now what we should be doing when we're in that place is we should actually be taking the process slow. Slow. We should be slowing the process down. So the hot seat we did with Ryan... Ryan got into that room with the, um, Britain's largest, it was either logistics company or transportation company. You can find the hot seat in the, inside the, uh, the members area. And he said he went in there feeling like a two out of 10, a two out of 10. He said within five minutes, he felt like an eight or nine out of 10. Why was that? It's because the guy in front of him, who actually was a former recruiter, who gave him even more shittiness, was why are you, why are you? And Ryan was like, whoa, 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 no, let's slow the process down. It's not about why us, it's about being a mutual fit. There's no point us actually working together moving forward if we can't serve you and we can't have a partnership moving forward. So let's slow the process down a little bit. Let's see if we're actually, we're a fit. So for me, can we take a, back, a step back and just um, take a reset here? So we're taking the process slow and we're moving from being sales into a trusted advisor. A trusted advisor is a phrase that I got off Jay Abraham probably about 15 years ago. And now it's bastardized and used by everyone. So what you're doing, you can move from sales, but you're actually moving in almost from a consultancy perspective. So even, even if you say, and you might have the ability to say you've got more leads you can do, but listen, do you know right, right now, it's not a fit for us. I can see the requirement you got, but you need just one Java developer. We tend to work with partners who need a minimum of 20 Java developers per 12 months. So right now it's not a fit for us. So we're coming in from a place of being more of a consultancy partner. So we slow the process down. Next challenge that I see is that we get into a meeting or we get on the phone, especially if you've gone to a new niche or you've suddenly you've upped your rates from 10% to 12.5% or 15% to 17.5% and you're like, oh my God, this is the first time I've met, I'm meeting someone at this point. And you move from a place where before you felt comfortable, but now you're following. You're following. You're following your client. You're following their lead. When really what we should be doing is we should be leading. And we lead with our CAS, which we'll come to. And the biggie. The biggie. We move from selling into diagnosing. What you're really doing with the client attainment system is you're diagnosing a problem in their system, in their process. So right now, you use PSL. Yep, this is the problem. You use an internal recruitment function. Yep, this is the impact of that. You use other recruitment businesses. Well, the average recruitment business has a database of ABC. So you go into diagnosis mode. You're basically a doctor. You're a doctor. You're changing your entire positioning from being selling into being a doctor. Now, even if you, if you did, took this first part now and you slowed the process down up front, they speak to so many recruiters. Like when I um, have been calling to companies before, many years ago now, I was thinking about the first time, and you've got recruitment companies doing pay-per-click. What idiot fucking told you to do that? Do you think clients sit there looking for a recruitment business? They're inundated every single day with recruitment businesses. 
Now, I pay per click for a funnel, so it's slightly different. You're there to diagnose, not to sell. So you're going you're gonna to absolutely mess their head up when you, when you reframe this. They're expecting you to be a recruitment person, a recruitment snake to sell to them, secondhand car sales. So you want to change this. You want to turn it on its head. That means a change in, in, in you, in how you, how you work with people, how you work with both your clients and your candidates. We're talking about clients now. But the more senior you get, the more controlled you need to be. The more you try and snap and yap like a little dog trying to get that sale, you're going to repel them. And the biggie is this. As we know, we're nurturing. But right now, 10% of your clients are hiring, 90% are not. So if you push back on them and you said, listen, we only, you know, we only, we only work with partners who are looking for five job developers per, per contract, not one. Now, you might need the money now, so it might be a different ball, ball game. However, how many recruitment businesses do you know who've got the ability to pull back and, and, and talk in that way, speak in that way, act in that way? Now, it might be on the flip side, though, that you demonstrate you can deliver one, then you get the contract for 20. But the point I'm making is you're a trusted advisor. You're acting as a consultant. A consultant, not for now, but for the next 20 years. This isn't just a short, short win, a now thing, and it's done. This is a long-term, a long-term approach. Your business has to be, I imagine, in business for the next three to five years. So this isn't just a now thing. And if you've got a database of 10,000 clients, you can get through them conceivably, all of those in a campaign in 10, 20 weeks. So don't piss off and burn your bridges by being the now, now, now recruiter or the person who comes into the inner circle and is like, big red button, fucking yeah, 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 yeah. No. You want to be in business in the next three to five years. You're a consultant. And the same question in terms of how to get retained business, Andy. Lead flow and positioning. And some people just made, made the decision, someone called the other week, just made the decision one week, I'm going to be retained. But it's ensuring you've got the ability to do it. So if you don't get that contract, you don't get that, that, um, that role, it's not going to kill you. However, this is a long-term strategy. So there's two forces that mean your client will say yes or no. One is, if they got confidence, got confidence in you, confidence in your business, and number two, can you achieve the outcome? So we, in, in the UK, we've got, um, what's it called? Uh, the Apprentice. You've got the same in the US with, well, it used to be with Mr. Trump. And in the UK, we had a guy win it last year, this um, recruiter guy. And it was, it's hysterical, actually, the fact that his business plan and what he was doing, basically, he was just a recruiter and was a good-looking young lad who was, had a bit of gumption about himself. But there's no strategy behind it. But what he did convey is this. He had the confidence and that transferred to his, you can imagine transferring to his clients that they had confidence in him that he could deliver. But also the outcome to the client was really clear. What he was very good at was clarity. He's very good at being specific. So when you speak to a client, it's like, yeah, yeah, we've been in business 23 years and we've got this system. Da -da. Can you convey, can they Get from you confidence that you can deliver. But then have they got clarity of outcome? Got clarity of outcome. Key, absolutely key. So we talk about our client attainment system and we've got our client attainment system. Yeah, we've got a system in it and some of you have got 100% track record now closing using it, which is great. But why is that? It's just clarity of outcome. It's clarity of outcome. So again, what we're creating here now in these, in these, and Johnny, my apologies, how many pages it is now, this, this um, workbook and this playbook is what we're creating is a framework for you to have the tools to close. But what you must get, or your client must get from you is one, the innate feeling they got confidence in you. So how did that happen? But then they must have clarity of outcome in terms of this guy, this girl, can deliver. They will deliver. They will deliver. If you are not so specific with the outcome, the chances are you're going to lose it. Now, there'll be one or two people on the call now who are fucking awesome at sales and they could go and sell ice to the Eskimos. 
But most of you are going to be in a place whereby either you're going through a phase of either growth, you're doing it yourself, or you're looking to pass it on to someone else in your business or multiple piece people in your business. So you need to train them. So there's two forces. Number one, how do we convey confidence to our client? And number two, how do we actually convey or get them to understand with crystal five-year-old clarity what the outcome's going to be? So these are the two facets we need to get inside our client, which is what we're going to do. These are the two forces. They need to have confidence in you personally, but they need to know the outcome is going to happen. So you've got the best CAS system in the world. You can send me a CAS, and it's fucking awesome. And I go, wow, Gerard, amazing, amazing. And if I have 20 appointments, I close none. Right. What's going on there then? So what's going on? This is probably screwed. On the flip side, Ryan, when he got the million pound tender, he had the worst CAS, well, in fact, one of the first CAS systems we did at the time. He called it a triple R system. And if you go inside the Facebook group, I think you might find it under the file section. He called it the triple R um, system. Good name, eh? It has spelling mistakes in it. It's about four pages long. It looked like something that you could knock up in 10 minutes. But what it did do, though, it set him apart in terms of the outcome from his industry. Now, I'm not saying copy out Brian's because no way you copy what he did. But what I'm saying is, in his industry, he's the first person to start to denote there's a process and that and an outcome. But what we want to do now is we want to make sure that conversation you have, you box off both of these dual forces. Their confidence in you and your business, but also clarity of what they're, exactly they're going, to, what they're going to get and when. If you nail these two forces, you're on point. You're on point. In my own business, we've got, uh, now I've gone through 10 years of pain, testing, 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 testing. And I speak to one of my team. Why have you not used that model? Why have you not used that model? We didn't need to. We didn't need to use it. So when you speak to a client and your client's got a lot of questions or they've gone quiet and you walk out and you think it's gone well, what you should have is a process in place, a set of beliefs you need to instill, a set of models you need to share that you know that when you do all of these points, and there might be 10, there might be 15 of them, you know if those 15 happen, your conversion will probably be 100% or 95% or 90% with your clients. Then if you've got a new consultant, so say, for example, you're currently doing 200K, and then in a year you're doing 700K, and you've got a new consultant on board doing the, the closing for you, and that and the consultant says, yeah, I've done 10 sales calls this week, and I've closed one. Oh, that just sounds like a shitty week, Mark. That's, that's, that's tough luck. No, bollocks. What is the actual template? What is the process to close that call? What are the models you need to share with that client? What are the beliefs you need to install with that client? The client isn't going to say to you, oh, can you tell me more about this? Oh, so, oh so-and-so down the road, they've, they've said that they can do this. Can you, can you do that? And they're not going to do it. The worst type of client you're going to have is the client who says, yes, 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 it's all nice. And you know what happens? You never fucking hear from them again. And why is that? Because you've not put the frame in place up front. So there are two forces you must instill. You must instill confidence in you and your business, and you must get clarity of outcome for them. If you don't do that, you're fucked. Simple as that. You are screwed. And you could be in recruitment 20 years, and you could say to me, Andy, no, bollocks, Andy, um, I close 7 out of 10. Great. You reverse engineer the steps. I guarantee you, you instill confidence, and you've got clarity of outcome. A million percent. But what you can do with this when we go through these steps, you can actually install these almost like in a computer, step by step by step by step. And what's exciting to me is you can train your consultant to do this. You can train your consultant. So we're going to create a conversion call now. We're going to create it. We're going to create all the things that are going to happen on the call. We're going to um, install the beliefs that they need to have about you. We need to install or rather overcome the objections they can have about you, your business, they're never going to say to you, I don't believe you because, or so-and-so said this, they're never going to say it. The only, only thing that you've got as a weapon is, Andy, I've had 10 conversations and I closed seven using my strategy. If so, awesome. Let's get 100%. Discover how to build your recruitment employment agency. 
using one to many automation and inbound strategies before anyone else in your market specialization. Check out RecruitmentMarketingInternational.com.